Well, if you are in any high-level prison, you cannot guarantee your survival. The main thing you want to preserve is your mind. Stay active both physically and mentally, and do not think about the free world constantly. There are things that you can do to give you a better chance of survival. Today, we will tell you how to survive a supermax prison. Number 8. Why Supermax Prisons Exist There are roughly 2 million people in prison or jail in the United States at any given time. According to the U.S. Bureau of Prisons, a small segment of that population poses significant challenges to wardens, guards, and other corrections workers. The difficulty of controlling those individuals described as the most dangerous, recalcitrant, aggressive, and antagonistic inmates in a prison system drove the design and construction of increasingly secure facilities. The first super maximum security prisons were built in the 1980s, and there are now more than 30 so-called supermax prisons in the United States. ADX, the only supermax for federal prisoners, was built in 1994. Karamet Ryder teaches criminology and law at the University of California, Irvine, and wrote a book about a supermax prison in California called 23-7, Pelican Bay Prison, and the rise of long-term solitary confinement. The explicit rationale for supermax prisons is that there are people who are so dangerous they have to be removed from the general prison population, and by removing them, everybody else would be better off, says Ryder. Theoretically, there would be less violence and you could deter gang behavior by locking people away in these really harsh and restrictive conditions. American domestic terrorist Unabomber Ted Kaczynski gestures during an interview with a journalist in a visiting room at the ADX Florence, August 30, 1999. Kaczynski is just one of many notorious criminals doing time at ADX. Number 7. Don't let your brain shrink Supermax prisons are known for putting inmates in borderline torturous solitary confinement. Researchers state that the stress caused by confinement can shrink parts of the brain that are responsible for memory and controlling emotions. If you develop spiritual strength, it may help give you a sense of purpose. Finding religious faith, becoming more devout, or taking strength from other belief systems could help you cope with your life in prison. 6. Keep it to yourself Remember, snitches get stitches. And in ADX, you'll be within feet of some of the most notorious and dangerous criminals alive. That includes Barry Mills, the leader of the Aryan Brotherhood, and notorious Mexican cartel leader El Chapo. Maybe solitary confinement doesn't sound so bad with these despicable neighbors. But whenever you're allowed any brief form of socialization, it's best you mind your own business. The one thing you should never do in prison is give information on other inmates to the guards and authorities. Number 5. Develop a Routine One of the best things you can do to stay sane in Supermax is to avoid stress. I know it sounds impossible given the conditions, but you can develop strategies to relieve your stress. Building a routine and sticking to it might do the trick. Shuja Graham was wrongfully convicted and found solace in routine while on death row in San Quentin prison. He woke up at 5 a.m. every day and exercised. Then Graham sponged himself clean. Later in the day, he meditated. That kept him going until he was exonerated and released in 1981. Number 4. Keep Daydreaming Life in Supermax Prison will not be the life you dreamed about, but that doesn't mean you should quit dreaming. Michael Jewell served 40 years in prison, including 7 years in solitary confinement. He used to kill time for hours by working out detailed visualizations of himself in a vivid alternate reality where he could enjoy being in open spaces and talking with people. Creating mental images can stimulate certain parts of the brain that help with mental activities, abstract thoughts, and motor control. You might even imagine things that feel real. Number 3. Don't Eat Sugar 
Mental illness is common among incarcerated people. Around 55% of males and 73% of female inmates in the U.S. suffer from some form of it. Adding solitary confinement to the mix only worsens these conditions. Three quarters of all isolated prisoners report symptoms of psychosis, such as hallucinations. Some inmates pass the time by eating junk food, but don't do that. While comfort food might provide momentary relief from your reality, those sugar-driven endorphins will only worsen any symptoms of mental illness that you have. Your vitamin and mineral levels could get low, since they come from whole foods. Experienced inmates recommend that you do your best to stay healthy. You survived a supermax prison. As you behaved so well, you are transformed to a less restrictive facility. But it is crowded, and it's easy to run afoul of the wrong people. Some people say that surviving might depend on the things you do in your first 24 hours in prison. Number 2. You ration books. You get two a week a random paperback of a guard's choosing. You regiment your day. You create and continually reinvent a routine. And you stick to it. You pace the bounds of the cell. Three and a half steps in one direction, three and a half steps back. You keep moving. When the cell block floods and the cell floor is beneath several inches of water, which happens regularly because it's one of the few forms of protest possible, you slog through it. When the floor isn't covered with water, you break up those pacings with push-ups and sit-ups. Sometimes they're complete, other times they're not. A part is missing. You read a sentence, a paragraph, a page, a chapter at a time, whatever keeps you from running short of words before the next week. Books are passed out Sunday night, unless guards are busy with cell extractions or flooding, or they just don't feel like passing out books. And of course, this happens often. When guards don't bring books around, or you get ones you've already read, you read the books you have again. You recite what you memorized as you pace your cell. Number 1. You use anger to keep yourself from slipping into the abyss of suicidal thoughts. You know those prisoners when they show up in general population. They don't last long. They return to IMU for senseless and usually unprompted acts of violence that are over the top as they are inexplicable to anyone who hasn't experienced long-term solidary confinement in a supermax. Still worse prospects for recidivism are the prisoners whom administrators release from IMU directly to the streets. They're the ones who almost immediately commit a violent crime that doesn't make sense to society. And so does every other prisoner in this country who's made it through solitary. If you ever do emerge from Supermax, natural light will feel like a shank stabbing into your skull. You can't stop squinting. You experience vertigo in open spaces. It doesn't recover with your body. It is an empty space that returns you to Supermax when you sleep. You awaken in the night, heart in your throat, certain you're still in the strangling grasp of the cell. When you're not asleep, the empty space shows up in behaviors prompted by psychological triggers you can't control. When you're crowded by others, you become overwhelmed with anxiety. Your impulse is to extricate yourself, to retreat from everyone, to self-isolate. And when you find you're unable to do so, you do whatever it takes to get your back against the wall. When someone touches you unexpectedly, without permission, or without excusing himself, you flash with anger, recoil, or lash out without thinking. The experience takes you back to IMU, when the only touch you experienced was to be chained, leashed, pushed, prodded, pulled, dragged in the direction that the guards wanted you to proceed. There are sights, sounds, and smells that constantly evoke IMU in you. Do share with us if you have more tips for survival. Please subscribe to The Luxury World. Thanks for watching.